Hey everybody, welcome to Everyday Journey. Today, we're going to install this light fixture. The uh, If you remember one of my other videos where I got the garage door opener, um, and it didn't work of course, but oh well. This right here, I got it from the same guy, same time, and uh, it does work. Granted, it may have an issue with these, um, but it does actually light up for now. It's just a little slow to, to start. I'm going to use it for the time being and see if, uh, see if we hopefully can get some, some a lot of good use out of it. Um, it actually has four bulbs in it, which is better than the one I've got right above me here. It has two bulbs in it. Um, so hopefully we'll get more light out of it and uh, make these videos a little bit better. So uh, what I have to do to it, this is a normal fixture. It's supposed to be going screwed to the ceiling, uh, which is what I'm going to do. Um, it normally would have a enclosure over the top of it to, uh, to diffuse the light. This one does not have it. I think the guy broke it or something. I don't remember. Um, but I don't really need it, I don't think. Um, this is supposed to be wired up with normal house wiring into a junction box, just like you would a light or something like that. Uh, we are going to go with wiring up a, a, an old extension cord um, and having it plugging in exactly the way that the one I've got above my head is. Um, Hopefully that will work the way we need it to. Um, it should. I don't see an issue with that. Um, but, just so you guys know, as a side note, I haven't been, been, out, been available for a while. Um, I've been doing tons and tons of other things with, uh, with yard work and everything else. Um, by that, the yard, the lawn business, and my normal job. And I don't know if you could see it, but above my head you might be able to see little holes in the ceiling in the sheetrock here all the way down uh, and uh, that right there I've got sheetrock everywhere in my garage right now granted the garage does look a lot better than it has um, I've been working on that too uh, but all these holes I've been looking for a drain drain pipe for my washing machine slash kitchen sink um, where every time our washer would actually drain out it would bubble up into the kitchen sink and, uh, and at one point it even went further and started coming out of the the, the, the drain right there where the uh, the washer goes into the wall and uh, so I knew I had to fix it but sadly there was no well as far as I could find there was no clean out anywhere to be able to clean out that um, and, and because it's got the kitchen sink attached to it there it's you know it's got grease and everything else draining through there and that's what clogged it up so I end up punching a whole bunch of holes probably about 10 holes in my ceiling here trying to find that drain pipe I knew it should have crossed across my, my ceiling um, and it turns out I think it actually crossed way back towards the door and I stopped before I got to that point. I actually eventually got where my drain pipe comes down over here. I eventually got tired and actually just tore it open right there, found the drain pipe and, and ran a snake through it that way and, uh, and then put a clean out on it which is not advisable but I put the clean out on it anyway because I know it's going to happen again in the future and I want to have access to it so I don't have to do this again. So that's that's kind of what I did and if you could see it, um, even this light right here, I had to just clean off a whole bunch of sheetrock drywall off of it because it was just covered in it. So, And little by little I'll get this place cleaned up like I've been wanting to do, get it all organized like I've wanted to do. Uh, but it'll never be perfectly clean like you see some people's garages and shops. It just won't happen. That's not my style. So, anyway, sorry for the long introduction here, but uh, let's get started. What I've got to do with this thing is I've got my wires here um, where it was wired up to this extension cord, which worked, but it's not what I wanted because, one, it's a little too short. Um, so I've taken it off. Two, it was actually going down through this hole here, which actually would be going up into the ceiling if you had it mounted on the ceiling. Well, I don't want the cord being trapped between the ceiling and this um, whenever I screw it up. So I want to make sure that I've got a hole on the side of it. So here where it comes, raises up here on the, on the side of it, I'm actually going to drill a hole through so that I can uh, I can put the wire through that. That way whenever I screw it to the wall or screw it to the ceiling it, will, it won't be pinching the wire at all. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to install a pull chain on it. 
if you see these, I've got them to where I can turn them on and off. I only have the ones on that I want. And, uh, and normally whenever I come down in my garage, there's only one light that comes on. It's on a motion light. And you see it every now and then. It turns off. It's directly in front of me here. Um, and it, it, it's just a little bitty, uh, probably 13 watt fluorescent bulb that uh, turns on whenever you walk down here. Because we've got the freezer down here. We have some food stores that we have down here. And uh, so we come down here to get them and we just have that light turn on and turn off after about 10 minutes or so. That way somebody doesn't leave it on all the time. Um, but it's no good for filming or anything like that. It's not bright enough for that. So, um, so I want things like this. But the pull chain is nice because I can leave those off and have that light on um, because I believe if I turn that light off I believe it's going to turn all these off and I uh, prefer not to have those always on whenever I need that light on so it basically you know it's I just want exactly what I have except for a little more light so I've got a pull chain here and I've got my my cable so let's go ahead and get started first we need a hole for this to go through so let's grab the stuff Alright, so it's going to be a little harder than I thought. Turns out the hole that I need is 7 eighths. I don't have anything that big to cut a 7 eighths hole. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to make a, use this bit, this is probably an eighth inch bit or something. We're going to make a pilot hole, and then I'm going to take this 7 eighths Forstner bit, which is actually for wood, um, and I'm going to score the outline of a hole, um, basically just as a marker, because I don't want to tear up my Forstner bit. Um, and then after that, then I will take the Dremel tool, and which is right here, and use the the router bit, you know, the corkscrew drywall bit, um, and actually cut out the holes. And hopefully we'll just speed our way through that, so you guys don't have to be bored by all that. So let's see what we got. Test out where our hole is going to go. Go ahead and do a pilot drill hole through here. Just be leery of the wires on the other side. This thing is unplugged. Actually, it's completely undone. So let me let you guys see what I did here. So there you can see. There's the side, and all I did was just basically mark the paint um, with that bit. I didn't want to ruin it, so. Now I just have to take my Dremel tool and go ahead and cut out to that line. Oh wow, that's like uh, the most horrible way you could do that, but it did work. Now we just deburr the hole some. And it's not perfect, but hopefully it'll keep me from getting my fingers caught in it. So here's what we're going to put in, which is the same thing that was here before. This is just a grommet that, that plastic insert that goes in here to help protect the wire and keep it from cutting itself. We need to clean up our mess a little bit. Alright, so now that we've got a place for our wire to come through safely, um, we need to actually mount the pull switch. So, I think it will be able to attach to this, which is the cover. goes on here. What we may end up having to do, we'll check it after it's after it's all put together, uh, but we may have to put a few screws down through here to hold this down a little better. We'll see that as we go. Let's go ahead and uh, get our hole in this. Here is our pull switch. We just unscrew the the end fat or the uh, what's going to have this thing mount to it. And it looks like, well, we need a hole big enough for this to actually mount and go through. So let's measure that. 
All right, looking at the diameter of it, it looks like it's about 3 8 So we'll start with that. All right, so let's just pick a place and drill a hole. See if it wants to fit this time. Much better. Okay. Now that we know we got a hole that fits, let's move on to the next step. Let's wire it up. Alright, since I'm going to wire in place, that way I can get the length of the wire, the length that I want it to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a make a place or attachment point for the ground screw. So we're going to go with right here. Actually, we'll go with right here. And let's see if our ground screw will actually screw into that. We have to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, right, there it goes. So it finally started there. Another thing I'm going to do just to make it a little better is I'm going to scratch up the surface, get the surface paint off of all of that right there. Just take a file. Just try and remove some of the surface paint from right where that's going to attach because I'm going to attach the, the wire directly to it. It doesn't matter what it's going to look like because uh, it's going to be covered up by that plate anyway. Should be good. So, just so we don't lose it. Go ahead and screw that back in, and then we'll attach this up to the ceiling. All right, as you can see, I'm using an extension pole for painting. Um, I've extended it up to a little bit further than the distance between my table and the ceiling, and uh, that way I can use it to wedge up in here to put the light up without actually screwing it up. So right now the only thing that's holding it is that pole. So this is one way of doing it. You could do it with a, uh, a short 2x4, something like that. Something that would actually be almost too big. That way you can just kind of wedge it in place. Um, or you can have somebody help you. So I've got one screw in place already. And uh, now it's on that end and it's actually on the beam so now I need to adjust this side to go on the beam as well or the floor joist or whatever you want to call it but that way it's going into something besides sheetrock Now a couple more screws, and this thing will be uh, in place.
I think honestly that's going to hold it. Alright, so we've got a wire up here. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot in the end of it. This is unplugged, of course. And this will help keep it from slipping back through. Alright, so we're going to take our two white wires and these are coming from the ballast. These need to connect to our white wire here. Make sure that's nice and tight. Next thing we're going to take our ground wire or green wire and we're going to connect that to the ground screw up there all right so now we need to connect up our, our black wires on the pool chain um, This side right here is going to be on the feed side of it. And now the other ones are going to go for our black wires here for the ballast. I think we need to strip that back a little bit more. Now we can zip tie all the wires up out of the way here and get them all nice and neat and then put our cover on. I'm going to call that good enough. <clears throat> now we got to put our cover on and run the pull chain through the hole. Alright, now we got to put our light bulbs in and uh, plug it in, see how she works. Alright, the bulbs are in. Let's see her work. There we go. I think the, like I said, the ballast may be a little, maybe going bad, who knows. Um, but let's check this out, see if it's any better. Alright, so is this any better than the other one? Let's see if I can do a side by side. Uh, hopefully this is better. Um, you may not be able to tell. But the good thing about it is I'll be able to use this other light that I've got right here. To put it, put it maybe right here, right in front here. Um, so I can use this space over here better or maybe further back there because I really don't have a light <clears throat> right by my garage door. Um, which makes that whole area there kind of dark. So we'll see where I'm gonna where I'm gonna put it. But of course, I still have to reroute this cable so that it's uh, up now the way, um, and I have to make my pull chain longer, uh, which like I did with the other ones, I just put a string on it, put a washer on the end of it so that it's weighted down. It doesn't have to be great; it just has to work. Um, but yeah, seems to work fine here. If you got any questions, send them my way. Sorry I haven't posted any videos in a long time, but as you can tell, I've been busy, just like everybody else. So I'll get them when I can get to them. Hopefully you like this. Hopefully you can uh, do some similar things like this. Um, and hopefully it helps you out for that. So if not, then, oh well, at least you got to watch me fumble around in my garage again. So anyway, you guys take care. I appreciate you watching.